Okay guys, here we go. It's a little project here. I got this 97 Lumina for my sister and uh, it's throwing a check engine light. The code is P0753 and this is a common issue and it's actually an easy fix. A lot easier than you would think. In most cases, it is a solenoid right here. This is the one two shift solenoid. And it's right up, sitting right on top of the tranny there. You have to pull the side cover off. I've seen people on the internet saying, oh, you can get to it through the bottom pan. No, you cannot. You have to lower the cradle, the driver's side of the cradle a little bit, and then the transmission down. You can get that side cover off right there, and then your shift solenoid is right here. So I'm going to demonstrate how I uh, diagnosed this and found out where the problem was and show you how you can do the same. It's pretty easy, actually. All right, on the top of the transmission here, you're going to see this electrical connector running into the side of the transmission. In other words, here's the engine. Zoom in. There's that plug running right there. You can disconnect that plug, or you can back probe these terminals here with a T-pin. What you want to do is put a, uh, a DVOM, set it on resistance, and check the resistance between that red wire and kind of the camouflage uh, green-looking wire there. If it is open, most likely you have a bad solenoid and the solenoid is open. If it's okay though, you're going to have somewhere between 17 and 35 ohms, somewhere around there. That's what they test normally. So if it shows open, which most likely it will, you're going to have to pull the side cover off. And you're going to want to drop the two driver's side cradle bolts here, loosen, not completely take them out, but loosen the passenger side bolts. Disconnect your intermediate steering shaft here so you don't damage that. Take the lower control arm off. I'm doing tie rods as well, so we got the tie rods off here. And then the cradle will lower down. And what I do is I put an engine hoist here. So that way you can safely drop the engine down and lower it. And it's easy to work on. You're going to have a bunch of bolts to take off here. You're going to need a T25 Torx, 13 millimeter, and 10 millimeter to get these off. And the, the four Torx are down on the bottom here. There's one 13 that goes right here, and another 13 that goes right up there. The rest of these are all 10s. Okay, now once you get the side cover off, you're going to want to take a test light here, right here, and connect it to a good ground. And what you're going to do is you're going to probe all these solenoids here like so I'll show you and you're gonna want to see if the test light illuminates between ground and these terminals on these solenoids here so let's try uh, let's try this one first okay light up light up so most likely that solenoid's good let's try this one that lights up and that lights up now this one here, this is a pulse width modulated solenoid for the pressure control. One side is going to be steady, another side is going to pulse really quick. So there's steady, and there's your pulsing. The camera, a little bit difficult to see it on the camera here, but it is pulsing. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see with this camera here. The shutter speed's really slow with the low light. You can kind of see how it's flickering there. In reality, though, that is blinking extremely fast, so fast the camera can't even pick it up. But you can see it with the naked eye. Now let's try this solenoid here. For your information, this is a 1-2 shift solenoid right here, and it is bad. And you'll see the difference. Nothing there. But we got power there. Look at that. Now, let's just confirm that uh, we're on the right track here. So, what I'm going to do... I've got my scan tool open. This is a Tech 2 running on Windows here. And I've got my wireless keyboard. I'm going to command the solenoid on and off and listen for a clicking sound. If we don't get a clicking sound, it's probably bad. So let's go ahead and do this. We can line up here to, uh, line up to on. And there's that. It's got an integrated touch pad. It's pretty cool. So when I command the solenoid on, this should click. And it's loud enough you can hear it. Nothing. All 
All right, so now I've got the new solenoid plugged in, and just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and uh, test and see if we got power here on this new solenoid on either terminal. So I got my test light, let's check here. Test light illuminates, check the other one. Test light illuminates, look at that. So we had an open in the solenoid and now that's fixed. Now let's go ahead and using our uh, Tech 2 here, let's go ahead and command the solenoid on. Let's see if it clicks. Here's my touchpad. Let's go ahead and click on. And you can hear it click. Let's go off. There's off. Back on. Click. And off. Click. If you're in a noisy environment, all you have to do is uh, put a finger on it and you can actually feel it clicking as well. And that's a fix. So we'll have a uh, First gear back, check engine light will go away, and this tranny will be good to go. So just a little video over there for you guys, kind of interesting how this works out. It's easy to diagnose, so hope this helps you out. Anybody else looking for uh, solutions to this problem? Again, most likely is your solenoids. These go out really frequently, but I have seen faulty PCMs cause uh, the same problem, and I have actually seen shorts to the uh, transmission case in this wiring cause that problem too. But just so you know, the solenoids are the most likely cause. They're cheap. They're only like 17 bucks and they're not too difficult to get to. Okay, just another uh, little quick clip here for those of you who like advanced diagnosis and voltmeters. This is going to be fun. So as you can see, I have got my voltmeter connected on the resistance to the old solenoid and we have OL. So that stands for out of limits, by the way. Now let's go ahead and disconnect it from the old one here. Connect it to the new solenoid. See what our resistance is. And bingo, there you go, 22 ohms. That is perfectly in spec. There's a problem, an open solenoid. There's a fix, replace it. Costs about 17 bucks. And last but not least, I keep adding to this video, but for those of you who have never done this before, uh, to get these solenoids out, you need to pull this little clip out. It's easy to do. All you need is a little pocket flathead screwdriver. What you need to do is basically, it's the same thing right here, I'll show you how. All you do is take your flathead screwdriver, like so. And if I can get my camera to focus here, there we go. Just wedge it behind the little clip, pull it out. And your solenoid will come right back out. Stick the new one in, put your clip back in, and you're good to go. That's all that's to it.